Green light's not on. <laughs> Welcome, I'd like to call this May 10th, 2021 Council Meeting in order. If you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, guys. Okay. Let's go. You're good. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Will the clerk please call the roll? Lamb. Here. Rose. Here. Shields. Here. Simpson. Here. Coyne. Here. Hazeltine. Present. Hedinger. Here. <clears throat> Reading of the minutes. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I move that the minutes from the regular meeting of April 26, 2021 is submitted and prepared by the clerk be approved. Second. Discussion on the minutes? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the minutes? Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Hoyne? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Heffinger? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Uh, reports of standing committees. The finance committee met prior to council this evening. We'll meet again in two weeks. Public properties, Mr. Sh I mean, the health, safety, and sanitation, Mr. Simpson? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we had a uh, special meeting this evening prior to finance to go over some of the requests from the police department. Other than that, we have no other meetings scheduled at this time. Thank you, public property, Mr. Shields. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, no meeting scheduled and no report this evening. Thank you, special legislation, Mr. Lamb. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I will be scheduling a meeting um, early in June to revisit the um, proposal on demolition. And I, I, um, I appreciate the uh, fact that the animal, the recent animal ordinance has gone back to special leg legislation. So um, I have continued to work with folks uh, that are interested in that issue and um, hope to bring that to special legislation in, sometime in June as well. And um, my effort is, is, is specifically that this time when, when I come back with the ordinance, it will be more detailed, um, more targeted, and I think it will help us create what would be a model. Um, we can get a model or, uh, um, of what the community needs to do to ensure um, animal welfare. Thank you. Streets and sidewalks, Mr. Heffinger. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report and no meeting scheduled at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Water and utilities, Mrs. Hazeltine. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report at this time and no meetings are scheduled. And Emerging Technologies, Mr. Rose. Thank you, Mr. President. No meetings scheduled and nothing to report at this time. Thank you. Request for council action. We have several for finance. We have 2193 Communities Corrections Act, CCA grant renewal for the Muni Court. 2194 Increase Expenditure for Baker, Dublacar, <coughs> Beck, Wiley, and Matthews, the Law Department. 2195 Increase Expenditure for Walter Haddonfield. LLP Law Department, 2196, Bids, Equipment, and General Pavement Services, Service Department, 2197, 2020, Auto Letter of Arrangement, 2098, State Route 18, Corridor, Waterline Modifications, 2199, Easements, North Broadway, Bridge Replacement, and 21100, Bids for North Broadway and Spring Grove, Culvert Replacements. Reports of Municipal Officers, Mayor Hamlin. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, with the COVID-19, just an update, Medina County remains in the red level. Uh, ask the public to stay vigilant, avoid large gatherings, wear masks in public, washing hands frequently and social distancing. Um, updated information on business openings and safety protocols around both the city and the Medina County Health Department website. All of the efforts along with the ongoing vaccine administration has greatly reduced the number of cases in our county, as well as hospital admissions. Uh, I had a conference call this morning with the health director and she's hoping that Medina County this Thursday, May 13th, will be removed from red. We're just not sure if it's gonna go down to orange or two levels down uh, based on how low our numbers are at this point. Uh, and that, that's looking over a three week average. Um, so I'd just like to uh, tell everybody well done on that. July 4th activities, the fireworks, um, our plan this year to be set off again on July 3rd at dark. Um, there are some requirements along with the COVID. If watching outside and cannot social distance from non-family members, then masks are required per the health department. The July 4th parade will line up um, at 3 p.m. at Medina High School in the West Student Lot uh, across from the intersection of Spring Grove and uh, 
East Union Street, and the parade starts promptly at 4. Again, if spectators or parade participants cannot socially distance from non-family members, then masks are required. We, as we have in the past, ask the candy not be thrown from vehicles, only, only those on foot. They're recommending individually wrapped candies uh, may be tossed to children. In fact, it's preferred they be tossed versus handed directly to them to keep the social distancing and, and uh, everybody safe. We're asking all parade entries to display an American flag to honor our Independence Day. We ask for participants and spectators cooperation with the above requirements as approval to host both events is dependent upon compliance with the proper social distancing and mask wearing, if not possible. And we appreciate the public's compliance with that. Uh, on July 4th, also the Medina Community Band is planning to have a July 4th concert at the bandstand area versus the gazebo. And this lets them spatially distance some of the uh, participating band members better. The concert is tentative, provided they may find rehearsal location and is also weather dependent. So there'll be more details to follow. Um, issue one uh, passed here on May 4th. I'm thankful and appreciative that the Medina City voters passed issue one on May 4th. We as a city have been working on a resolution for space and safety issues at the Medina Municipal Court for over two decades. This approval will permit the city to partner with, the Medina, with Medina County which makes the most sense both operationally and fiscally for both the city and the county. And I'd like to thank the Medina City voters uh, for voting for same. And then last but not least, um, sadly, uh, Herb Porter passed away surrounded by his family on May 6th. And I just ask that everybody please keep Phyllis and the family in your thoughts and prayers at this time of loss for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Durham, Director of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, first, I have a reminder, the city has an income tax and all residents are required to file. Um, the filing deadline this year was pushed back to match with the state and federal filing deadline. It is May 17th. Um, that is coming up soon. Um, secondly, we have the bond issue, which is the first two ordinances on the agenda address that and I'll address those when we get there. Thank you, Mr. Huber, Law Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you, Mr. Gladys, building official. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you, Mr. Mendel, planning and community development director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you, Mr. Bacoli, service director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report this evening. Chief Walters, fire department. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you, Mr. Patton, city engineer. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to announce that this afternoon at the board control meeting, the board approved awarding a contract for the 2021 concrete street repair program. We expect to get started with that in the next several weeks. Thank you, Chief Kenny, Police Department. Thank you, Mr. President. The Medina Police Department is hiring for the position of patrol officer. Interested candidates can find information and apply at www.medinaoh.org. Under the employment tab, the application deadline is May 26, and the written test will be held on June 2nd. I would encourage anyone that has an interest in a career in law enforcement to apply. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, notices, communications, petitions, there's none on this business. We have one. We have ordinance 5521, uh, the third reading. It's an ordinance authorized the law director to prepare the necessary documentation for the transfer of city lot 9374 PPM permanent parcel number 028-1981-391 containing 0 0.1874 acres of land to the city, to Medina City Development Corporation or CIC. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Uh, this is the third reading uh, and we will vote on this. The law director is preparing an agreement between the city of Medina and the Medina CIC for the transfer of the property and reimbursement of the property based upon an appraisal being obtained from John Emick. We received preliminary information regarding it. I think the uh, once we get the final appraisal number, that'll be inserted into the agreement between the uh, city of Medina and the CIC in which the CIC will reimburse the city, the cost of the land being transferred to the CIC. And the CIC, of course, uh, awarded the uh, land to a local developer under a ground lease, which will be a payment under the ground lease for the term of uh, 40 or 50 years, which will be the money being used to reimburse the city. And of course, the 
income tax generated by the project will also go to the city of Medina. Uh, Mayor Hamill, do you have anything else to add? Uh, no, we're, I shared those numbers with uh, Mr. Huber. We're waiting for the uh, formal appraisal. Uh, this, this was just in an email so far. But the, uh, the proposed 4,000 a year for 50 years is not enough to cover uh, the outstanding amount of, of the parcel value. So we're gonna have to come up with uh, another mechanism to pay the remainder about 133, 134,000 in excess of the 200,000 that's generated by the ground lease. Well, I think the, um, I think the, I don't have the email in front of me, but maybe I read it incorrectly. Wasn't there a parcel which was the city parcel and then the parcel which was the CIC parcel? There's two different, I thought one of them was like 193,000 was the number related to the CAC reimbursement or was it the other one? It's 140,550 for the city parcel and 193,200 for the development corporation parcel. Right, right but I think the, the city parcel is the one remaining which is uh, the parking decks on. I thought that, that's why we gotta get clarification. I, did, okay. I, I, thought, okay. I thought it was a little confusing. So you're thinking it's just the 14550? Yes, I thought, okay. it was, I thought it was on. Mr. Huber and I will sort through that. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. Because we'll it, it just seemed kind of high for both. You know, okay. Because one yeah. was a little sliver, and there's no way that that would Yeah, be. if that's all it is, then, then we're in better shape. Yes. So um, we'll present an agreement to you once Mr. Sure. Huber drafts that. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Um, is there any questions? No, sir. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Oh, Aye. Oh, I guess for the clerk, please call the roll. We're not in <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Heffinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Ordinance 5521 passes 70. Okay, introduction of visitors. Members of the public will be permitted the opportunity to speak on any issue or concern which pertains to the city during a portion of the council agenda to vote to the introduction <coughs> of visitors. All comments shall be directed to the chair in a reasonable time limit of approximately five minutes will be imposed. Is there a group? <clears throat> Please appoint a spokesperson. Speakers should approach the rear microphone and state their name and address so it can be entered into the minutes. Members of the public will be afforded the opportunity to comment on other portions of the meeting as determined by the chair by a vote of the majority of council members present. Is there anybody that wishes to address council at this time? I do. Okay, Mrs. Pritchard. Okay, having such a good time, uh, Gene Pritchard, High Point. I have a question on your ordinance at the very end of the meeting, ordinance 80-21 and 81-21. It comes to $90,000 for additional um, attorney fees. Could you tell us what that is for? Sure, I think we, could, we will address a little bit of that. Mr. Huber, can you just explain what the, the coverage of those fees for the outside legal counsel is for? I don't know that these uh, numbers are going to be what these bills from these lawyers amount to, uh, but we have to put money into an account in order to have it available. Uh, Greg Beck from Baker Duplicar is the law firm uh, assigned to us by our insurance company to defend the city, and he's been asked to defend the city in a lawsuit filed by Mr. Jock and Ms. Walker. Okay. Uh, and he also, that firm defended the um, suit from Ms. Walker and Mr. Jock that went to the Supreme Court. Uh, so the insurance company pays a part of that bill and there's a cap on what they pay for that and the uh, general fund has to pick up the rest of the expense. The uh, Walter and Haverfield firm is representing the Board of Zoning Appeals and a zoning issue now pending. I'm presenting the evidence as the attorney for the city and he's advising the BZA. Because I'm presenting the evidence, I can't represent the BZA at the same time. So that's what his. So, and then this comes out of the general fund or the law department budget? Well, generally it comes out of my budget but you've already ha you only uh, budgeted forty five thousand for contracted services. So yeah, I usually try to budget uh, minimally, and then if the bill starts to get closer, then Keith comes or the finance director comes to me and says you need to put a little more money in the account. So that's 
this request is a request to put more money in the account for these two law firms. Okay, and then that comes from the general fund, is that correct? That's correct. His, his account is a general fund account, and then the additional money being added to it would also come from a general fund. Okay, and so the election on Tuesday, that money would come from the general account, or would that, because you have to pay for that election on Tuesday. What, what do you mean, what do you, when you say pay for the, getting on the ballot, you're talking yes, about? Yes, yes. Initially, I'm not sure, what fund did that come from, Mr. Durham? That we pay that, <clears throat> that's correct, we pay that out of the general fund. The Board of Elections bills the costs of holding an election back to the entities that have things on the ballot. And do we know the number of that? Because <clears throat> there's multiple things, and for the city it was just one thing, but there was other things for the townships that were on I, that ballot. I don't, I don't know that number. I don't know that we've gotten the bill yet anyway, but the, the bill is dependent. It varies from election to election yes. because it depends on if there's a whole bunch of things on, then each entity pays a portion. If you're by yourself, you pay the full freight. So sure, it, but Mr. It, it Rose looked this up early on, and we knew it was from the full there, freight, and then it was were, divided up. There were 89 out of 121 precincts that had something on the ballot, so the cost will be spread, spread, spread out over 89 precincts. And if it was if it was just us, I think you remember the cost was like 60,000 or something, uh, right around 60,000. But now it's going to be lower; it'll be divided amongst all the different precincts. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Glad we can help. Um, anybody else wish to address council that, Mr. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm moving relatively slow. I got a knee replacement here in February and I'm dealing with that at this time. But again, my name is Stan Sheets. I'm an attorney here in Medina. My office is at 225 East Liberty Street, my home at 342 East Liberty been a resident of Medina County since 1957. My law practice here for 47 years, as well as two years before that, clerking for Pelton and Pelton. So I have 49 years of service to Medina County as a real estate attorney, a developer, a hotelier, a conference set and party center operator, and an entrepreneur. I wanna make a couple things perfectly clear to this council and the mayor. First of all, I love the city of Medina and the county of Medina. It's my home and has been my home for 63 of my 74 years. I'm not a transplant, I'm homegrown, born in Wadsworth and have values of Medina County. I'm a conservative and I'm proud of it. Third, there's not one thing you do here as city council or do not do as city council that directs, directly affects anything I do, feel, or say as I speak from my heart with heartfelt logic on every topic to, that I choose to discuss with you, which mainly has been zoning and planning. I have been an advocate for private property rights and zoning changes and have had a passion to do that and a mission over the past 49 years. However, the fourth thing I want to point out is my clients, primarily builders, developers, and entrepreneurs, elected to terminate doing business with the city of Medina over 20 years ago, after John, DeMont, John Coyne became a councilman about two years and Pam Miller began running the city of Medina with their band of liberals and determined that there would be no more annexations to the city of Medina. I took the initiative to meet with Lafayette Township, Montville Township, and Medina Township and had them all rewrite their zoning codes to create buffer zones around the city of Medina. Since sewer and water was available, there was no need for further annexations. My clients, developers, and builders all grew and flourished and developed residential, commercial, and multifamily dwellings in the four surrounding townships, as well as I furthermore represented and completed over 50 subdivisions in Medina County, only two of which are in the city of Medina. In the last 20 years, I've only been before you on three occasions with three zoning matters by my choice. The vast majority of these developments are in Wadsworth, Brunswick, Valley City, Seville, and surrounding townships. We created over 4,500 lots. We created over 15 condominium and cluster home developments. And although I was labeled by Mr. Rose as a disgrace to the city of Medina, I'd put my record up against any one of you over the past 49 years. In addition, I use this experience and what I believe to be some wisdom about building and development to make decisions based on facts. I never rely on what the quote politicians are saying because I feel that you say and do 
based upon your political agendas, your egos, your personal desires, supported by your quid pro quo politics of you vote for my ward project and I'll vote for your ward project. I feel that many of the consulmatic actions are pure theater that I see, whether I watch it on the Facebook or I come to these meetings. It creates a lack of trust and honesty to the public as there's too many deals behind the closed doors with decisions being made with predetermined outcome that lead to lawsuits and the need to hire special outside counsel as evidenced by the two ordinances resolutions on your current agenda and as I noticed at least two or three other additions of outside counsel over the past year. I stand on my comments from September of 2020 when I was here addressing you and I firmly believe it's time to look at term limits for city council of two terms or eight years and the mayor for a maximum of three years. I still believe we need new blood, new ideas. It seems to me that most of you came here to see how you could change things and how they were done. However, you became what I believe are the good old boys, set in your ways, you know more than any of your constituents and became almost narcissists, loving one another and telling us all about it daily. I truly appreciate the opportunity to make these comments. I look forward to working with you. It may be the last time I come to visit you other than as a public citizen as I plan to wrap up my career at my 75th birthday, which will be in December of this year. I leave you with a quote from George Washington. I believe truth will prevail where there is pains taken to bring it to light. I assure I will continue to be one of those pains in my term as simply a citizen in Medina City. And I truly appreciate the opportunity to address you today. Thank you, John. Thank you, Stan. Also, you gotta make it one more year to make it 50 years of legal service. That's a benchmark that a lot of, a lot of lawyers like to make. So I don't know when your 50th year is. It is this upcoming year. It is? It is. Well, congratulations on making your 50 years as an Thank attorney. Thank you, sir. All right, is there anybody else that wishes to address council at this time? Is there anything? Kathy, is there anything that we have on the, uh, nothing? Okay. Okay, introduction and considerations of ordinances and resolutions. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules requiring three readings on the following ordinances and resolutions. Ordinance 7121, Ordinance 7221, Ordinance 7321, Ordinance 7421, Ordinance 7521, Ordinance 7621, Ordinance 7721, Resolution 7821, Ordinance 7921, Ordinance 8021, and Ordinance 8121. Mr. President. Mr. Shields? I will make a motion to spend the rules requiring three readings of tonight's ordinances and resolutions. Second. Is there any discussion on the suspending the rules of three readings? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the motion? Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Heppinger? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Motion passed to 7 0. Ordinance 7121, ordinance providing the issuance of a sale of not to exceed 11,655,000 of bonds of the city of Medina to refund certain portions of the city outstanding bonds and authorizing related matters in the connection therewith. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Durham. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, with your permission, I'd like to discuss this and the next ordinance together. Sure. <clears throat> the, um, these two ordinances in conjunction are for a $19 million bond issue. It's a little over 11 and a half million in refinancings and a little under seven and a half million in new money issued. Since I've been finance director, we've tried to combine issues like this because there are costs of issuance. We have to pay underwriters. We have to pay for various things. By doing less issues and bigger ones, we get those costs are somewhat reduced. Um, we, the, the primary portion of this is the refunding portion. The reason we're doing this is we're able to save money um, by refinancing the bonds that are out, primarily because we're shortening the term. These bonds were issued eight and 10 years ago. So the bonds that were issued then, the, the ones that were 11 years are now gonna be one, the ones that were 12 are now gonna be two, and generally rates are lower for shorter terms. So we save some money there. Rates in the market in general are very favorable for us right now, so that's the other reason we're able to save money. And then finally, we have a very good credit rating which helps us with these uh, rates as well. Um, we're rated AA3, so um, that's why we're able to save money. We're, we're gonna save money on the refinancing piece and then the new money piece, like I said, we put that in with it so that we can get that savings by combining <coughs> issues. And my understanding the new money saving, or the new money being generated is uh, gonna come, the debt service is gonna be paid out of that 108 account. Right. And the and new money is gonna be used for uh, infrastructure improvements as we have in the past, borrowed 10 and a half million dollars. 
many years ago for infrastructure improvements, and we used most of that money to improve the industrial area, which has proven to be uh, a windfall for the city of Medina because most of the area and industrial buildings have been filled and we are getting uh, returns of income tax dollars generated from the monies that we put in for the infrastructure of the roads, the water, and the sewer portions of it with the county. Also, we limited the amount of debt service that we take out of the 108 account to a third of the monies generated through the income tax, quarter percent income tax that's put into the 108 account, which frees up the other $1.8 million each year that we gener generate. <coughs> we generate about $2.3, $2.4 million a year out of the 108 account from the income tax collections. A third of that goes to pay debt service. The two thirds of it uses, is used to pay for additional infrastructure improvements. So we try to be a little bit conservative with respect to the spending of that money and yep. how we allocate those monies. So and, I appreciate that. And that third is a good point. We, when we issued the debt a number of years ago, that fund was paying about a third of its revenue in debt service. But over the years, the revenue has increased and the, the uh, debt service is decreasing because of this refinancing. So that frees up some extra money and that's why we're able to borrow some more and still be at about that one third um, by finance by debt. And then the other two thirds are just pay as you go. What comes in currently, we spend currently. Thank you. Any questions or comments on that? Will the clerk please call the rolling adoption of ordinance 7121? Coyne. Yes. <clears throat> Hazeltine. Yes. Heffinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Ordinance 7121 passes 7 0. And ordinance 7221, an ordinance providing for the issuance of sale not to exceed $7,345,000 of bonds at the city of Medina to pay cost of construction, reconstruction, grading, draining, curbing, and paving street improvements in the city, including all related improvements and necessary pertinences thereto. Move to approve. Second. Uh, Mr. Durham, explain this one. Does anybody have any questions on this one? This is the new money going into the 108 account to be used for the infrastructure improvements throughout the city of Medina. Mr. President. Mr. Rose. Thank you. I just want to stress that this money can be used only for streets and sewage and those types of uh, or water lines, et cetera, underneath the streets. It can't be used for any other purpose. That is correct. I just want to stress that. Um, Thank you. And Mr. sidewalks. Sorry. Well, yeah, right, right. Yeah, sidewalks, curbs, streets. Right, right. Yeah. right. Thank you. Yeah. Whatever's listed here, nothing else. <laughs> Any other discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Hazeltine. Yes. Heppinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Ordinance 7221 passed to 7-0. Ordinance 7321, an authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT, for traffic signal maintenance of the state-owned traffic signal at State Route 18 and Foot Road. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. Patton. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, three years ago, the city en entered into agreements with ODOT for both the signal at 18 and foot and the signal in our next ordinance at 42 and Grande. Uh, the one at 18 and foot, ODOT is determined in conjunction with their current State Route 18 corridor improvement project that they will take over uh, maintenance of that uh, signal themselves. We're asking for this agreement because we've sent them an invoice for our previous service and they need to have an active agreement in order to process the invoice. So for this one, the 18 and foot, the agreement you're approving will end is June 30th of 2021. For the next one at 42 in Grande, it's an ongoing agreement. We'll send them a bill every year. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on Ordinance 7321? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of Ordinance 7321? Heffinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Ordinance 7321 passes 7 0. Ordinance 7421, it's authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT, for the traffic signal maintenance of the state-owned traffic signal at US 42 and Grand, uh, Grande Stonegate. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Patton already mentioned this one. This is an ongoing agreement with ODOT, the same as the prior one for traffic signal maintenance. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Heffinger. Yes. Ordinance 7421 passes 7 0. Ordinance 7521, an ordinance authorized the mayor to enter into a service agreement with Armstrong Utilities Inc. for a fiber dedicated internet access 40 line at the Medina Municipal Court. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mayor Hamill. The uh, fiber. Uh, internet from Armstrong is a uh, backup 
to the Medina fiber that they're currently using so they have redundancy much like we do here at City Hall. Thank, Thank you. you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Heffinger? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Ordinance 7521 passed the 7-0. Ordinance 7621, an ordinance accepting the donation of a 2009 Nissan Cube from south of the Square Collision Center for the use as a DARE vehicle for the police department. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Chief Kenny. Thank you, Mr. President. Rick Sticklin of south of the Square Collision had a vehicle that was crashed and abandoned in his business. Mr. Sticklin would like to fix the vehicle and donate it to the police department for use as a DARE vehicle. I'd like to thank Mr. Sticklin for his generosity and his ongoing support of the police department and the city at large. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I just always like to point out too that Mr. Strickland, he does a lot for Medina City Schools, especially Garfield Elementary. He's kind of adopted that building. Um, and anytime we've needed anything, he steps up. And I know he does a lot for the city, but he's a great Medina businessman and a great uh, business for the Ward 4. Thank, Thank you. you to South of the Square. Thank you. Any further <coughs> discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Heppinger? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Ordinance 7621 <clears throat> passed the 70. Ordinance 7721, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept one easement necessary for the North Broadway Street Bridge replacement project. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. Patton. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the city is planning on uh, reconstructing the bridge on North Broadway Street. In order to do that, we need to acquire three easements. This is the first of those three easements. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Heppinger? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Ordinance 7721 passes 7 0. Resolution 7821, a resolution authorizing the mayor to submit a request for federal grant funds for the State Road Reconstruction Project. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. Patton? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, several weeks ago, the mayor was uh, asked by Con Congressman Gonzalez's office about the potential of any city project uh, to use the federal funds that are currently being discussed. Uh, State Road is our next federally eligible roadway uh, that we plan on reconstructing. So we're requesting permission to submit a request to the Congressman's office for funding for the State Road reconstruction. Any further discussion on the resolution? We will clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the resolution. Coyne? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Heffinger? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Resolution 7821 <clears throat> passed the 7 0. Ordinance 7921, an ordinance amending sections 3102B11, 3105, and 3107 of the Salaries and Benefits Code of the City of Medina, Ohio, relative to community development department and accepting the job description of the Code Enforcement Inspector. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. Mendel. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this position is currently a part-time position. Uh, the person that was in it has resigned. Um, the administration, we've evaluated the needs for uh, the, at this position and what we need in the city. So we uh, would like to turn it into a full-time position, which would continue proactive zoning and property maintenance enforcement throughout the city. Uh, this full-time position would then help to, would execute a lot of the uh, code enforcement activities in order to, su to sustain the city's positive feedback loop of, proper, of market value and perception. Uh, this position would continue to report directly to the uh, community development director and do a majority of the uh, enforcement field work regarding zoning, property maintenance, and long, long, long weeds and grass uh, throughout the city. Uh, mm -hmm. At the finance committee, uh, we needed to make an amendment to the proposed job description to add specifically in there to for long weeds and grass enforcement. So that went to the Civil Service Commission on May 5th, and they affirmed that um, for council this evening. Uh, this position would be funded through uh, carry forward as it is now for a number of years, but it's also a, a critical position because having a full-time code enforcement inspector would permit the building official and the building inspector to focus more on the proactive, uh, um, to prioritize uh, plan review and building inspections uh, for our, you know, to maintain those well-regarded uh, services in those, in those disciplines. So I would ask for approval this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? <clears throat> Will the clerk please call the rolling adoption of the ordinance? Hazeltine? 
Yes. Heffinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Ordinance 7921 <clears throat> passes 70. Ordinance 8021 orders authorizing an increase of the expenditure to Baker, Dublecker, Beck, Wiley, and Matthews to $55,000 for the law department. Move to approve. Second. Discussion on this one and the next one, Mr. Huber, you talked about this a little bit previously. Is there anything else to add? Um, no, again, the Baker firm represents the city and a couple pieces of pending litigation. They're assigned to us through our insurance liability carrier. Um, some of their bill, the insurance company pays for some of it. We have to pay for out of the general fund. And I think that passed out of finance on an emergency clause. I don't think there's an emergency clause attached to the Walter and Haverfield from finance. Is that correct? That is so correct. on the second one in, involving Walter and Haverfield, I think we probably need to wait for the next council meeting on that since there's no emergency. Okay, thank you. I thought we'd make it through with, for Mr. Wetzel, but right. it appears not. Is there a motion to add the emergency clause to ordinance 80-21? I will amend my motion to add the emergency clause on 80-21. Second to include the emergency clause. Any discussion on the emergency <coughs> clause and or the ordinance of 80-21? Will clerk please call the rolling adoption of the emergency clause? Rose? Yes. <clears throat> Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Heffinger? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. And will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Heffinger? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Ordinance 80 21 passes 7 0. Ordinance 8121 is authorizing the increase of expenditure to Walter Haverfield LLP to $35,000 for the law department. Move to approve. Second. Is there any further discussion on this one is to Mr. Huber's comments? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Heffinger? Yes. Ordinance 8121 passes 7 0. Council comments? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, Mrs. Hazeltine? I'll start things off. Um, I just want to say a sincere thank you to everyone that voted for issue one. Uh, the people have spoken and it feels really good. So thank you for that. Uh, also, I'd like to offer my condolences to the Porter family. And I want to second Councilman Shields' statements and um, those of our chief about Mr. Strickland from south of the square. I've mentioned many times before that my children are one of Garfield's greatest. They were lucky enough to attend Garfield. And I am very happy with the work that they do, not only for the community, but they do it really do go above and beyond for Garfield. So thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? Mr. Heffinger. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, three years ago, I came before you guys here, and um, you guys pointed me to city councilman. Uh, and it was a job, honestly, I didn't think that I would get that night. <laughs> I, I took it seriously when applying for the job. But um, I didn't have any experience, and I just really wanted to get involved with my city more. And I thought, well, this is a great opportunity to start meeting people, uh, get my name out there, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, you know, maybe get appointed to a committee or something like that. Um, so over this past couple months, I've been talking a lot with my family and friends, and I've decided that I am not going to run for re-election this coming fall. So my term will be ending uh, December 31st when this year ends, and Ward 3 will be an open seat. I love what I've done here. I've loved what I've learned. I love to be part of my community. I love raising my children here, and I plan to go nowhere else. But I need the time with my family, and I've decided that this is one of the things that has to give so I have that time with my family. So I appreciate everybody here that's helped me so much. I appreciate the opportunity from the citizens that have voted for me for this, for this job and for you guys who put me into this job in the first place. Um, but I know that you are in good hands, and I, I'm, I'm not worried about that whatsoever. And I will still be here and hopefully helping in some way. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council comments? Mr. Rose. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, first of all, uh, I want to thank every, all the voters for uh, passing issue one. Um, I want to thank Nathan Case especially for his hard work and everything that he did um, coming here and presenting his thoughts uh, at the uh, resident comments, his uh, posts out on the uh, Facebook page, his development of the web page, um, and the, the data that was there, he, he did an excellent job in all of those areas. 
um, members of council and their input on what went out uh, as far as the information and the mayor and the various members of the administration who helped as well um, in getting the word out. Um, and uh, thank you, thank you all. Uh, to the Porter family, you have my um, sincere sympathies. Uh, I know Mrs. Porter and, and Herb have done a lot of work for our family and it, it's just, um, I don't know, kind of strange that I saw Herb putting a sign out Wednesday afternoon, or was it Thursday afternoon, Thursday afternoon, um, uh, out in front of uh, the, the driveway going back to their shop. And he was just, just was just Herb. And uh, it, 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 I was shocked to hear that within a few hours after that, uh, he had passed away. So my sympathies to the family. And uh, Eric, I'm surprised. Uh, I thought you were doing a good job. Thank you, I've learned from you. <clears throat> You tried to teach me. I'm an old guy, but you tried. <laughs> Congratulations. You got somewhere with me. So you'll be missed, but we still have three, four, five, six months to harass you. So thank you. Any other council comments? Commissioner Lamb. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Eric, it's an interesting comment that you made. I, I, um, I've enjoyed working with you, you know, and will continue, you know, throughout this year, but um, it is an interesting juggling act, I think, when you do this, you know, even whether you're at a local level like we are here or, or harder, I think, if you are, you know, at a uh, different level um, because of the, because of family. And I, I fully appreciate what your, you know, your, your commitment to the city as well as your commitment to your family. Um, I was talking to my wife day before yesterday. We were talking about our early years when we first got married, and my wife said to me, she said, you married me and then you left me for eight years when I was elected mayor. She said, as soon as you married me, you left me for eight years. You were never home. And, um, and I always thought that is an interesting kind of juggling act, you know, that maybe at the time you don't really realize. I didn't realize, I guess, that I was gone as much as I was, but um, I'm sure that there's some other folks in this room that, can, that um, have been through the same, really through the same issue. So. Um, certainly will be missed. You added a lot of, um, I think it's important that we have a nice, that we bring younger people on board, as I've said before, and, and I think we had a, you know, it was, it, you had a good, um, an interesting um, contribution to the city because you look at things from a different perspective because you were younger and you have a family, and for many of us, we're, you know, we're not in that same position, so we really appreciate what you put in and what you'll put in until you go. Um, and uh, the other, I have two other things, and one is I, I have a, um, an interesting picture that a friend of mine, Becky Weber, who had a house for years on West Washington Street until the tornado came, um, she still had a house, but she was, had to have her house fixed because a tree fell on the roof. And while her house was being fixed, uh, the workers that were working on it found in the attic of her house this, this drawing. and. It is a pencil drawing of the um, construction of the clock tower on the courthouse. And I asked people to explain the drawing to me, and they said it, it apparently was the architect had drawn this drawing, had given this drawing to the carpenters that would have been working on the tower. Um, and it was interesting that the Becky Weber's house during those same years um, was a place you could rent a room. And so the conjecture is that some of the carpenters that were working on the tower of the courthouse were renting rooms at her house on West Washington and probably left this drawing and somehow it ended up in the rafters of the, of the attic. And uh, she found it about, I don't know, she found it a number of months ago called me and, and said, I've got something for you. And I went over and um, this is what she had. And I've been meaning to bring it sooner, but every once in a while I'd think I was gonna talk about it, but I'd leave and get here and didn't have it with me. Um, I'm gonna give it to Brian Farron at the Historical Society um, so they can, um, you know, so that they can have it. Um, but I thought that would be interesting to share because it's not something you usually see. But if you live in an older home, you just never know what you might find up there in that attic. Um, um, Herb Porter, um, I've always thought I've been pretty fortunate in my life, and one of the things I think is most fortunate is the folks you get to meet and have a relationship with, and it's sad. Uh, I think um, it's a hard thing to accept that 
Um, I think I knew her, I met her Porter about 40 years ago. He was always there, always had a conversation, and, and, and I, I, my sympathies go to his family um, at, at, his, at, at their loss and our loss too, uh, of, a, of a really fine gentleman that um, really most recently the mayor and I and, and um, Medina TV were able to make a, a documentary kind of to honor Porter's shoe shop in total with he and his wife. Um, but Herb's passing, I think, is, um, is a, um, you know, it's a sad occasion, but, you know, sympathies to him and, his, and to his family. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to say thank you to the residents for giving us the direction that they wanted to move in with respect to the court uh, facility. Mm -hmm. And I think it, now it's incumbent upon counsel and the judge to, you know, come up with a plan and um, enter into an agreement with the county as far as leasing the facility, the 69 building. And uh, I'm happy to see that at least we understand for the future, the 1969 building will remain a courthouse. And uh, uh, I think that's important for everybody in the city of Medina to maintain the historical nature and structure of that uh, building. And at least we'll have a part in doing that for the, for the uh, future of this, the square. And I, I think that's important and it's, uh, an important message for us to to make sure that we preserve that so uh, mr. Simpson thank you Eric and, and I wasn't going to say anything tonight but but with your announcement I just have to say that uh, I've enjoyed working with you and I'm going to continue to enjoy working with you for the next six months uh, when I usually make a comment about uh, reminding everybody to be kind to one another uh, you're a perfect example of that because your tenure on council you you have been very kind to all of us and to the constituents that you, that you serve, and that's gonna be greatly missed. Uh, and Mr. Sheets, you brought up about term limits and, and getting new people in here. Uh, this, this body and the administration for the last year and a half, two years, has gotten beat up pretty bad. Uh, we've, you know, and it's, you know, we all have broad shoulders. We knew what we signed up for when, when we first ran, uh, but, I, for people that's interested in, in running for this position, you know, un understand some of the good things that you do, uh, whether it be of this body or the administration and the, the, the city employees and the city department heads, a lot of the good things that you do will not, it will go unnoticed because there's gonna be too many people that, that do show up and just wanna bash us. And, and that's okay, like I said, you know, we, we signed up for this uh, I just hope for people that are going to run for these seats in the future, uh, that will not discourage them from running. Uh, anybody that watches this program, uh, anybody that, that, that has attended these meetings uh, would, would have to think that there's not one of us up here worth a, you know, the, <laughs> a grain of salt. Uh, but we, we really do try hard. Uh, I think if you look at the, uh, the economy, the way it's been in the last several years, be prior to the pandemic, since the pandemic, uh, the city's financially in pretty good shape. The businesses around the community are in pretty good shape. During the pandemic, they've needed a lot of help, and I think in certain areas, the city was able to, to help them. Uh, the businesses on the square, the businesses in our industrial area are, are pretty much full. Uh, and that's, you know, we didn't go out there and, and get their employees uh, by ourselves, but some of the money, the tax money, your money that we've spent, I feel that we've spent wisely and, and contributed to the success of the city of Medina. Uh, in our finance meeting earlier, we've had, had one of our, our uh, homeowners association groups here requesting funding for a certain project. And the, the, the projects that, or the homeowner associations that have, have sprouted up here in the last few years, it's just amazing uh, the, the amount of effort that these citizens are, are doing themselves to try to, to make this community a better place to live. And, and even though what you see on the, on the television, uh, if you're watching this at home or if, if you've attended some of the meetings, this last two years have not been fun for any of us, but we still try to move forward and try to do the best that we can. Uh, you know, and there, you know, I, I can't think of my 17 years of being here 
of a time that uh, anybody has said to me, hey, if you vote for my project, I'll vote for yours. Uh, you know, but anyhow, it is what it is. Uh, you know, I, I thank everybody. I thank everybody for the, 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 the people that voted for us to support the, the courthouse project. I, I appreciate that. To the Porter family, I, I, I truly do give you my sympathy. Herb Porter was a hard worker and a, a pillar of this community for, for quite a few years. And Eric, you still have a few months to change your mind, uh, but I understand that you're not going to. I've got a Thank pretty you, good Mr. sandwich President. going here, though. Pardon? Between me and you. He's, got, yeah. he's in a good spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, John, you, I got President. one more thing. I, you know, and I, and I apologize for this, but uh, you know, I also need to thank, thank Paul Ro Councilman Rose because he really spearheaded the, our, the campaign right. um, that, that I think enabled us to um, be, get a positive vote on issue one. Um, he was out there, he was organized, and, and really was kind of the, um, you know, the main person in that. And Paul, I just want to tell you thank you. You did a good job. Appreciate your work. You're here. Thank you, Bill. But uh, a lot of good people behind. I just, I was the one who didn't have to go to work every day. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. You guys all have jobs. <laughs> okay. All right. With that said, uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you. You did a good job, Paul. This is my only job now, but no one needs to know. <laughs>